Hey guys, I'm Daniel. Welcome to this video. If you are new here, thank you for joining in. A little bit about me. Professionally, I am a registered nurse. I am here based in New York City, USA. I am from the Philippines and I've lived in London before finally moving here. Currently, I work as a school nurse and for this video's topic, it's going to be about London based on a question that my college friend has asked he messaged me last night. He asked, or he said, Hello Dan, um, are you in New York or London? And that he was planning to work in London as a nurse and if I had any thoughts about it. And he also added that everyone he knows is in the US and he just wants to do something different. But of course, maybe in the future he would be, consi he would be considering the US. So I'm from the Philippines born and raised, and then I finished nursing, have a bachelor's degree, and America has always been the dream for me. I have family here in the States, and I know that nurses are well compensated, you know, financially here. And for me to come to the States to work as a nurse, you qualify for the green card. However, because there was a lot of applications, a lot of nurses globally, uh, the, the process slowed down and I decided with my friends, or rather it's my friend's idea, to apply for London while waiting for our US papers. Because yes, I do have a lot of friends, nurse, nurse friends, who have also applied for the US. So we, went to, we moved to London, worked there. Slowly by slowly, my friends would then cross over to the States when they've been called by the US Embassy. On my end, now, me growing up, I love America, and that could be a topic for another video. Surprisingly, when I moved to London, I actually fell in love with London, and I actually wanted to stay in London. However, things didn't really work out. I was intending to just be there for two years. I actually received my embassy email, or my lawyer's email, um, two years in. And I just thought to myself, you know what, I want to, I really want to stay in 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 London uh, I like I like the life here it's very nice very pleasant etc I gave it two more years I kind of okay I kind of prayed to God I was like all right I asked for two conditions if I would find love the kind of love that would lead to marriage I would stay in London or if I stumble upon or if in some way I could get you know a great fortune in the millions, I would stay in London. Because if money wasn't an issue, I would stay in London. Because I really love it there. I enjoyed it there. And the thing is, and and the minimum, the minimum with regard to great fortune, because I know it's like, oh my god, it's so impossible to to win the lottery. Like it's 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 unlikely. It's very improbable. Alright, so let's be real. Let's be real. So I I said, okay, if I could get a job that would at least equal the pay of nurses in the US, I would stay in London. Eventually, after working for two years there, I did find a job. I applied as a disability analyst, which should be for another video, and that didn't work out. And with regard to dating and relationships, that didn't work out too. And I just felt eventually after four years, I was like, you know, Daniel, what else are you waiting for? The, the conditions that you've set for yourself, for you to stay, did not work out. The pandemic hit, the pandemic happened, and I felt that that was the final nail on the cross. Especially when there was like a travel ban go coming to the US. And then fortunately, the president back then made an exemption for um, healthcare workers. So I said, Daniel, now is the time. Now is like, that is the super sign for you to move to the States. While, you know, there's no, no ban. And back then, while the pandemic was on, you can't really say how the future is going to turn out, right? So I was like, you know, things didn't work out for me. Um, the ban has been lifted for healthcare workers. Let's just move to the U.S. When I moved to the U.S., I tell you, two years in, I'll be three years here in New York this December, and I'll tell you, I am so glad I moved. I am just so grateful. I am living my life of my dreams, really. And <laughs> that could be for another video too. Now, here's my advice just to go, you know, because I might be talking too much and 
too disorganized. Okay, if you're a nurse in the Philippines and you don't have any applications yet um, for any countries you'd like to immigrate to, and let's say you don't have any strong reasons for for any country to go to, and you would ask me, would you recommend London? Because it's a very quick pathway, more or less, it's just an English test that you take. And then there's a very simple computer-based test. But of course, when you come to London, you do take the OSCE, which is like a licensure practical exam. I would say go for it. I think go for London because it is a wonderful experience. It's, to me, as someone, I've never been to London before I moved there. So as someone who is immigrating to a foreign country, I think London, especially London, is perfect for you because it is cosmopolitan. The people, generally speaking, are, are polite. I, I love their manners. I love their culture. It's very, very pleasant. <laughs> I, would, I was about to say, you know, they're very polite and warm, but actually, no, I would rather, I think it's more accurate to say they're very, very polite in a way they do take care of you when you come over. Like you've got accommodations, the assistance for new nurses, especially from overseas, is good. I'm very satisfied with that. I, I'm very happy and satisfied with my um, transition into London. I worked in King's College, which is South London, and they helped with the flights, paid for the airfare, which I appreciate. You know, with London, you are in a way at the heart of Europe, very accessible to other countries in Europe. Being in the United Kingdom, everything else in the country is very accessible. There are a lot of pleasant people there, especially Filipinos. So I would definitely recommend London. Long term wise, I would say please plan to go to the States. Review for the NCLEX. And if you can, yes, if you want, give it time. Get your British passport. I was in London for four and a half years. I was in the running to be a permanent resident. After five years, you become a permanent resident. And then just one more year, you get your British passport. I couldn't wait anymore because of the pandemic. I didn't want to, to risk anything, so I just moved here. But for those who are wondering whether they should wait it off until they get their British passports, yes, yes, yes. And not because like, oh, so that you can just go back to, to the UK or whatever. I'm like, no, no, I think, I think it's a wonderful option to have to have this British passport. But of course, in the grand scheme of things, at the end of the day, I'm happy. I'm on my way to getting an American passport. I'm happy with that. I'm very happy with that. Now, back to back to London. I know that there are agencies who are recruiting nurses overseas and they might place you in other places than London. I would say choose London because it's more cosmopolitan. You are you have quicker access to international airports and it's a more fun city, especially during the weekends. Now, with regard to cost of living, see, here's the thing. Nurses and many other professions as well. It's not just nursing. You're really not compensated well. You're going to be paying a lot for rent. And this is what many people complain about. Food wise, I think it is cheap, especially if you cook. What really bites with London is, in the UK in general, is really tax. Their tax brackets are very low and it could reach, I think, 35% to 40%. You could check online on Google. And so you're just like, you know, when you do extra shifts, you get, you, when you reach a certain bracket, income bracket, your tax is then deducted 40%. So, and that's nearly half of your pay. So can you imagine you're, you're working extra shifts, you are so tired, and yet you just paid half. Literally. Is that even worth it? And I have to say this because, you know, I did love London. I wanted to stay. And I kept asking people, I kept asking other Filipinos who were planning to go to the States, but then they changed their mind. I asked more senior Filipino nurses who, although they've never had any applications for the US, but they did stay in the UK. I asked them for their advice, whether I should move to the States. I even asked an American nurse whom I worked with. I asked him, what are your thoughts? Would you recommend that I move to the States? Because I have this opportunity. And he said, you know, in the States, they make you work like a dog. And I'm like, okay, f fair enough. And I, and I do get a lot of feedback from that. But to be fair, in the US, in the UK, it really depends on where you are and what institution or facility you work in because many of them will make you work like a dog and I just thought to myself when I was in London I was like 
I, I already felt that I was working like a dog. So I just thought, you know what? If I have to work really hard like a dog, I might as well get paid in dollars, you know, in American uh, compensation as a nurse. With other senior nurses, I asked for their advice and they said, Daniel, while you're young, go for it. And I asked them, would you do it? And they said, well, you know what? If I was younger, I would do it. Because now they're more settled in, in London. They have their properties, their friends networks. Now here's the thing with regard to property. Once upon a time in London, there was the golden age of nursing where when you do agency nurse nursing, you could get a lot of money. And I think that's how many of them were, was able to, to get into the property market, the property ladder, as well as, you know, before the 2008 financial crisis, it was easy for them to get a loan, I think. And that's how they were able to climb the ladder. And let me just say this, let me, let me add, I, I also asked a schoolmate of mine who was actually waiting for his US papers to come through and he's he actually he's like you know they always say this it's up to you it's up to you it's up to you it's so confusing right ultimately he actually changed his mind he said he will go to the US because in the US he is able to bring his parents over to buy a house and buy a car. While if he just remained in London or in, in the UK, he, he wasn't London based by the way, if he remained in the UK, he would struggle to get those things. But then eventually, ultimately, he chose to stay in the UK. So me, I moved. I am so glad I did. Now, I'm not saying that nursing here in the US is perfect. And I'm not saying that you get compensated really well initially but eventually you do get a lot of money and that money goes far many of my friends here in the u.s now they have their houses and their cars they go on vacations and this i want to point out because this is like one of the things that people say when they discourage someone from moving to the u.s is that oh in in, in the uk over here we get five weeks seven weeks um vacation in the US, oh my god, you just get what, two weeks? You know, all I can say to that is, I think that's not a reason enough for you to stay in the UK. That's not, for me, that's not reason enough. Because I have friends who go on several, several holidays, you know, in a year. And also those who work in hospitals. I'm not saying all hospitals here are perfect, just like in the UK. But there are good hospitals and they have good paid leave policies. I have friends who travel a lot and they're happy. Me, for example, because you're like, because back then I was also afraid. I was like, oh my God, I'm not gonna have um, five weeks or seven weeks. So now I work as a school nurse. I don't work during summer. That's two months. I have Christmas vacation. That's two weeks off during Christmas. So I get to spend that time with my family, with my loved ones here in the States. For summer, I am going to go home to the Philippines. Now, to be fair, to be accurate, I work as an agency school nurse. So my rate is higher. No work, no pay. But even if I don't get paid during the summer, I've saved up so much when I, while I was paid. And I really don't want to give numbers because that's just, I don't know, it's just not in good taste. But let me tell you, it's six figures. And that already includes me not working for two months and the other holidays where there's no school. I do have friends too who are doing travel nursing where they get to manage their time and have long hol holidays. Looking back now, I'm just like, you know, I'm so glad I did not use, oh, the seven weeks on paid vacation and not coming to the States. And another, another thing that was scary to me that people would say was, oh, but in the US, you don't have universal healthcare. As someone who worked for the NHS, Here's what I'll have to say. Okay, fine. Fine. Yeah, you can use that. You can use NHS universal healthcare as your reason to stay in the UK. I mean, I guess that's a valid reason. But to me, with regard to socialized healthcare, I think the person that really benefits from it are those who are chronically ill. I think you benefit from it the most. If your priority is free healthcare, if that is your reason for existence because you're just so afraid then yeah stay stay but is it gonna be worth the amount of money you could have earned the amount of money you could have used to expand your life and here in the US when you work you get health insurance 
if you're in a hospital, like for example in Kaiser, I believe, when you work there for I think 10 years or so, you get a lifetime of free healthcare. On my end, I may be agency, I, I pay for my healthcare, I'm happy. And we also have other government programs. I say this to you. Whatever your reasons are to stay in London or move to the States, I hope it's not because, oh, there's no free healthcare. You know, there's no vacation leave is just is just two weeks. I hope that's not your reason for not moving because the potential of your life is so great. You could do so much here, so much. I'm not trying to discourage people who want to stay in London. At the end of the day, you know, it's your life. You live it how you want to live it. I went there again a few months ago. My friends there are doing well. Some have expressed some frustration. But I, I tell you this, if you're already in London and you've considered the States, I promise you, the mere fact that you've considered the States, you already know that there's something that's not enough. And it's, it's a numbers game. With regard to the politics here in the US, with regard to the, the shooting and all that, I, I can't guarantee anything for you. But the US is really huge. I work in a school. So <laughs> when I watch the news about school shootings and all that, I'm like, oh my God. But the probability is very low, just like when you fly the plane, etc. Anywho. All I can say, you listen to these discussions, it's all fear-based. Oh, no free healthcare. Oh, vacation leave is so little. Oh, school shootings. Oh, racism. Darling, there is racism in the UK too. So please, wherever you go, there's always assholes. Sorry. There's always, you know, people who are just trash. So to sum it up, Go to the UK, especially London, connect with your friends there. He did have a question too as to like when I was mentioning like, you know, I go to the US, get paid here more. And he goes, oh, but is it really a matter of lifestyle, etc. You be the judge of that. Based on the Philippines, I would say my life in London, the vibe working as a nurse and the place I was renting, etc. The vibe was very university. I felt like I was back in school and I was renting a dormitory. Now, yes, I could afford I could afford renting an apartment. However, that's going to take up a lot of my income. The thing is, you could afford to go on vacation in in Europe, very cheap fares, and there are a lot of cheap hotels and hostels. But is that reason enough for me to stay? No. But I enjoyed my four and a half years there. I traveled to so many places and I I've visited twice now since I moved here in the States and I intend to visit often because I love London. It is my second home. New York is my third home. I enjoy shopping there and the food. It's very cheap, especially when you earn American money and when you're, when you're earning here as a nurse, you are a celebrity in London is what I think. <laughs> but yeah, do London, work there, and hey, if you're happy there if you find love etc by all means stay but when you feel like you could do so much more you could earn so much more please come to america really and don't be discouraged by your age in my opinion while you're alive you're healthy you're able really take the opportunity to come to the states and at least if you get your british passport then all right if you if america doesn't work out for you you fly back and yes i do have a friend who has a british passport but then has still come to the states and she is enjoying it now don't get me wrong america there will be some dramas it is for many of my friends including myself it's very trial by fire but once you get through it it's going to be an amazing experience oh my god i really hope i've shared a lot of information here it's just really fun i hope i made sense if not Thank you for listening. If you've got more questions, if you want have feedback, please do send me a DM or message me and I'll be more than happy to, to answer back, especially through a video. So thanks for listening, guys. I hope you guys have a lovely day ahead and a wonderful week too. I wish you well. I wish you good luck with your plans. Take care of yourself. Yeah, I, I'm, I'll make more videos of London, even if I have to repeat these topics. But I do love London. I will visit often. I have been visit. I've I've went twice already. Hello, and um, I'm happy. I enjoy it. Thanks for listening. I hope 
I've said enough. What else advice can I give and thoughts? Please get accommodations close to your hospital or wherever you work, but do not get discouraged or like don't let the length of of your commute discourage you from being adventurous. As much as possible, try to live close to your hospital and make sure it's safe. The thing with London is during holidays like Christmas or whatever, public transport won't be working. All right, so you really have to plan ahead. The weather in London is mostly gray and wet, so you have to protect your mental health, get membership at the leisure center, at the gym, work out, socialize if you're you know, Catholic or whatever, go to church service, establish a network of friends, all right? It's very important have this sense of community by connecting with friends, connecting with people. Go out, enjoy yourself. And one of the perks of London is when you do tra um, public transportation, there are daily caps wherein it becomes unlimited after three taps, for example. And explore. There's just so much to do in London, so much to explore. It's, it's multicultural, cosmopolitan. It's going to be a wonderful life experience. I would recommend it. To me, it's fairly it's fairly safe. And to think I moved to London in 2016, where there were those you know stabbings and whatever, I still felt safe. And and I think that the British people are so wonderful. And if it weren't for the money, but to be honest, <laughs> but actually, it's not just about the money now. Weather wise, I'm just like you know I love the weather here in the U.S., especially here in New York. More sunlight and open skies. But yeah, yeah. So, I think that's it. I think that's it. Thanks again for listening. I wish you good luck. Enjoy. You're gonna have a, you're gonna have a lot of fun, and please make friends. And you know, especially with your cohorts, be a good friend. Be there for each other, and be safe. All right. Thanks for listening. Until next time. <laughs>